Well hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so quick update up in the uh, greenhouses. Um, as you can see, the um, broad beans are doing really well. Um, they're really starting to grow, as you can see. These are growing literally by the day. You can see how quickly they're sort of bursting through the ground and stuff, and they are doing well. The weather's a bit hit and miss at the minute. Um, you know, we are still getting sort of cold patches and hot patches. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping them in the greenhouse for now. I don't really want to shift them. Um, but what I will be doing is, because of the size of some of these, what I'll do is I'll start to start to harden them off before um, very much longer. So what I'm going to do is gradually sort of let them go outside. But because we're having frosts, um, the odd frost here and there, I'm, I'm obviously being really careful. Because, I mean, broad beans are really hardy. You know, they are really hardy plants. But, um, you know, with them being so young and tender, they, they, they can possibly get damaged with the frost. So I don't want to obviously damage them now. So what I'm going to do is leave them in the greenhouse for now. Make sure that the greenhouse is well ventilated. And um, in the next few weeks, I'll be taking these outside, ready to put them in the ground. These ones that we planted last November, as you can see, they're actually in flower now. So they're, they're really coming on. Really, I need to get them out into the ground somewhere in the, uh, the very near future. So obviously they're a bit more you know sort of hardy plants if you like because they're a bit older but again you need to you can't just go from a greenhouse outside what you do need to do is hard the plants over a, a couple of weeks or so to make sure that you know that they are you, you know a bit tougher then you can put them in the ground and away they go so moving on <coughs> the kale's come through as you can see there's plenty of kale there um, I'm going to put in probably about 20 plants or so so there's more than enough there for me um, so all of them will come through. I'm going to wait till they get a bit bigger before I uh, transplant them. But that's what the kale looks like at the moment. Um, right, onions. These are the uh, normal sized onions, the ones I've put in um, by, by seed. Um, I'm keeping them reasonably dry as you can see. They, they do need a little bit of water. I'll water those at the moment. But um, I've not been overly watering them because you can get this sort of, I don't know if you can see the green... Um, sort of algae on the top of the ground that's that's typically a sign of over watering but what I've done is now they've germinated I've watered them with water out of the water but unfortunately there's algae in the water so that's where it's all coming from basically um, those are the spring onions at the back as you can see there they're really coming on so what I need to do with them now is separate them off into sort of groups of four or five together then I can plant them out in the uh, I'm going to put some in the greenhouse obviously some outside as well these are the uh, the calabres or the green broccoli as you can see they're really coming on now they also need a little bit of water it's been warm today over the past few weeks we've got as you can see it's got to kind of 39 um, in the day and we got down to minus 3.5 so as you can see the the temperature swinging up and down by about 40 degrees in the greenhouse at the moment it's about sort of 13 so it's quite quite fresh up here at the moment but um, in the day it does get quite warm so that's what the sort of first greenhouse looks like we haven't got anything else of any really interest in in here yet um, i've not watered the um the dahlias yet um, i'm going to be watering them in a week or so when the weather definitely gets gets a bit warmer because what i don't want is for them to start to grow and then obviously we get a frost and a um you know it'll damage the heads so that's the first greenhouse in the second greenhouse i've uh, just got a couple of things going in here uh, we've got the fuchsia, which you can see is really, um, really starting to come through now. So obviously, lots of shoots at the bottom. What you can do is, if if the if no shoots appear on the main stalk, you can cut that right down to the ground and just let it grow from the ground um, up. So you know, I could potentially cut these off, but I'm going to leave this on for now because what you can get is like little buds forming on the end here. Then that'll grow into a, a shoot. So that's the that's the uh, the fuchsia. Um, and then these are the tomato plants. Again, I've got this sort of algae on the top of the ground, which, which won't really hurt anything. But as you can see, the strawberry plants are really starting to come through now. Um, that one there is not 
not doing very much. I don't know if that one's any good. And that one there as well. But the rest of them seem to be at least trying to grow. So obviously they'll go as spares to go in the um, the strawberry uh, patch out there. So as soon as I've um, just through the side of that wood you can see the frames. Um, so what I'll do is when I clean that out, any plants that aren't looking particularly clever or if I've got any spaces where, where the plants died, what I can do is just quickly bob um, some of these in there just to make up the uh, the rows. So I've got a you know a complete set of strawberries. Now the strawberries, um, I transplanted them last year. They were where the um, where this greenhouse is now. It was basically a square there. All the strawberries were in there if you haven't seen early videos. And I moved them there last year. Now when you first move them you always get a bad year. I mean last year I got basically no strawberries worth talking about. I got, I don't know, probably Probably about a kilo all through the year, um, which which is next to nothing really. This year, the second year that um, the plants are in, is typically when you get the bumper year. The second and third year they're in a particular position, is typically when you get the bumper year. So obviously what I do want to do is, um, before the year really starts, I'm going to go up there, clear all that out, get the frames off, clear all that out, take off any old foliage or anything like that. Um, make sure the plants are okay and then where there's any spaces, I can actually see one now, there's just a space there um, where, the, where the plant doesn't come through the winter. What I can do there is obviously just bob in um, a couple of these in the spaces and um, that'll, um, that'll um, fill the row up and then we should get a bumper crop of strawberries all being well this year. So that's the strawberries anyway, so um, I shall um, now crack on with some other jobs. Okay, so one plant I'm going to be putting in um, this year are these um, these cauliflowers. I don't know if you've seen these. These are by um, Frenchy in the season. These are cementy. Um, these are like the sort of ornamental sort of cauliflowers. Now, I've got to be honest with you. I don't have a lot of success with cauliflowers. Cauliflowers are the type of crop that you have to keep watered. You can't let them go dry. If you do let them go dry at any point, they they just don't form properly at all. Um, and unfortunately, because of my um, other commitments, I'm not able to get up the allotment every day of the week to make sure they're watered. So I think that's the main reason why I don't have a lot of success with um, cauliflowers, to be honest with you. But anyway, it's a brassica like many other, um, like many other um, plants. So they, they basically all get planted in the same way. So all you need is about an inch or, or so of compost in there like that. And what you want to do you want to leave yourself plenty of um, room to put a piece of glass on. Sorry, I'm just going to take a little bit out. Right, so what I'm going to do now is firm that down with me with a piece of wood, like that. Now, with, with brassicas, you want to keep the ground as firm as you possibly can be, like that. So, if I show you the seeds, now, Frenchy seeds don't come highly recommended enough for me. They are really, really good seeds. So if you do, if you are able to get Frenchy seeds, they are really some of the best seeds you can get to be honest with you. They're a little bit more expensive than other seeds however you do get plenty of seeds in there as you can see how many seeds are in there. Um, I'm not going to grow loads of these I'm probably going to grow I don't know maybe 10 or something like that so I'm going to put about 20 seeds in here. I'll put plenty in so they're the seeds exactly like other brassicas uh, they're like small um, black dark brown balls. All I'm going to do is very easily cast those very simply should I say, just cast those over the game as spread out as you possibly can do. Like that. Now all brassicas are exactly the same. The, the, the seeds and the, the growing method pretty much is the same. And obviously brassicas are quite possibly one of the most diverse um, families of um, vegetables. Obviously you can get everything from cauliflower sprouts, cabbages, kale, you know, then also things like um, turnips and stuff like that. Obviously they're all in the brassica family. So what I'm going to do now is just sprinkle a little bit of compost on the top and obviously with brassicas you know you can eat pretty much the whole of the plants and that goes for all all um, all brassicas it doesn't matter what brassica it is you can literally eat all of the plant for example a cauliflower like this there's no reason why you can't eat the leaves because it's basically the same as kale likewise with um, like purple sprouting broccoli or calabrese or anything like that they're all brassicas you can eat every part of the plant so just because you're eating the um, the, the, the florets off a um, calabrese or cauliflower or um, 
um, you know, purple sprouting broccoli or whatever. There's no reason why you can't eat the stalks, uh, which is exactly what you can use for like vegetable fried rice, for example. If you keep the stalks off a of cauliflower or off kale or whatever, chop it up. If you're not going to use it straight away, you can freeze it, and then you can you can put that in vegetable fried rice, which is very nice. Um, so you know, no part of the plant needs to go to waste, really. So all I've done is I've just put a very light sprinkle of compost on top of there. Um, what I'm going to do now is put that on one side in the greenhouse here. I'm going to put a little bit of glass over there till they've germinated, just in case we get a bit of cold weather in the next few weeks. I'm just going to give that a light watering, not not too much, um, you, you know, just a bit of water, tap water uh, before they germinate. As soon as they've germinated, you can then go over onto rainwater or whatever. Um, and then I'm just going to put a small piece of glass over there, wait till they've germinated, as soon as they come through, exactly the same way as we, uh, we've done with the kale, you know, within a couple of weeks they're going to look like that. Then you can prick them out um, into your um, sort of bigger pots like that so they grow like that. Then they'll get to about, I don't know, nine inches or so high, then you can put them out into the ground outside and then they'll grow on to form the uh, the cauliflower like that. So, I'm going to give this a bit of water and I'll show you these in a couple of weeks time when they've, when they've all started to grow and we can prick them out and um, get them onto the next stage. Okay, so we're going to get this greenhouse ready. All I'm going to do, obviously as you know we've washed all the glass heads and stuff, so what I'm going to do now is um, take off um, about six inches or so of the earth uh, which is in these two um, beds, this one and this one. Take that out. As I blight last year, all I'm going to do is take that into the garden so it's away from any any of the um, sort of tomatoes or potatoes, obviously, because those are the those are the plants that'll get blight. Um, get rid of the soil, and all I'm going to do is put some chicken manure and dig all that in, and then put some more topsoil on, which was on the uh, potato patch last year. So that'll all be nice, fresh soil in here to put the tomatoes in later. As soon as I've done that, I can then cover it over, then I can start to put the um, the pot plants in here uh, until I'm ready to put the uh, tomatoes in. So I'll just get on with that now. Okay, so there you go, that's basically about six inches off the top um, of, of um, both beds. And all I've done is basically just taken, as I've just shown you, just taken the, the shovel over the top. And I've taken out, to give you an idea, just over three large wheelbarrows. So that size of wheelbarrow, basically I've taken three of those out of here. Now what I'm going to do is basically replace that with a mixture of chicken manure and fresh top um, soil. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some manure in here, some um, chicken manure, which I have had bagged out there since um, since last June. So that's had a good six months in the bags, rotting down. So I know it's nice and rotted down. I want to spread that across the top and then dig that in um, to the to the soil that's here. That's going to do two things. Obviously, one, mix in the uh, manure into the into the soil. Secondly, what it's going to do is is basically break up the the soil at the bottom, bring what's at the bottom to the top, which is where all the nutrients are. And then um, I can I can then start to um, put some more topsoil on the top just to build up the layer uh, the level, and then I'll be ready to uh, put the tomatoes in. Okay, so there's the chicken manure. You don't want to put um, too much in. Um, what what I've got there is six bags, which are kind of bags about that big. That's what I've just taken it from. So that's more than enough to spread across this bed. And I've got a couple a couple of bags I've just put in there. Now this is. Reasonably strong chicken manure. This is basically the uh, what I've cleaned out of the um, of the run off the um, off the roosting bars and that. So it's quite. There's not a lot of straw in there. Um, there's a bit of straw in this one here, but uh, you know it's it, it's more chicken um, chicken manure than anything. As I say, it's been well rotted down. Um, I'm, I'm now going to dig all that into the uh, the border. One thing there is worth saying is obviously be careful of the glass. What I typically use is a smaller smaller fork. I normally use a a fork sort of this big to do the um, the greenhouse. Reason being is um, as it's as it's smaller, you're less likely to hit the glass and stuff like that. But obviously, take it steady. Be careful not to hit the glass. If you haven't got um, chicken manure like I've got, 
um, the best alternative would be, or possibly even better alternative, would be um, 6X, which is a, um, a, a chicken manure based um, fertiliser or, or um, basically ground improver, which you can get from most um, most garden centres. You should be paying about eight nine pound for a for a twenty kilo bag of that, which would which would more than do this greenhouse twice over. So um, that's that's you know if you can't get all the chicken manure, that's that's what I suggest you do. So all I'm going to do now is spread this across the top, so I know it's evenly spread out, and then I'm just going to dig that in, um, you, you know, sort of rotate it into the ground in here. Then I'll be putting some um, some topsoil um, on the top from the um, potato patch. So I'll just get on with that now. Okay, so as you can see, that's all sort of dug in now. What I've done is I've emptied all of the all of the large um, 12 inch pots that had all the sort of like the cucumbers and the peppers in last year um, I've emptied all of that to spent compost into the, the beds as well um, so that's that's all spread over the two beds as you can probably hear and, hear and see it's it's chucking it down with rain now so I'm not going to put the, the topsoil on it quite yet hopefully I'll be able to do that a little bit later today um, but all I need to do now is put around two or three inches probably a couple of wheelbarrows full of soil on the top and then what I'll do then is I'll cover it over with these boards I'll be able to grow all the other plants in here and then as soon as I'm ready to put the uh, the tomato plants all I need to do is take the boards off again obviously um, and then just dig this over quickly one more time and then I'll be able to plant the, uh, the tomatoes in. The reason I've done it now is what I need to get is the worms getting in there and mixing it all up for me and getting the bed all, all, all nice and ready and I need to give the worms a few months to do that so obviously what I've got now is all nice fertile manure and, and, and soil in there and obviously when I put the there are already worms in there um, in the in the beds but when I put fresh soil off the allotments there'll be more worms in there and then basically those worms will basically churn all of this up whilst the other plants are growing above them on the boards and then when I get to um, sort of May time when I'm planting out the, um, so, you know, sort of in four, five, six weeks time. What I can do then is basically just quickly dig it over, make sure it's all nice and mixed, plant the tomatoes in, and then away I go. So that's the uh, the prep, all but putting the topsoil on, and that's basically um, what I'm doing for this year. Okay, so the weather's not really improved very much to be honest with you over the past few weeks. Now March is always a bit of an unpredictable month, but really I need to um, I need to get the um, the peppers and the tomatoes started. Really, I could have done with doing these um, really in February, back end of February. But what I was trying to do was sow them so I could have them up in the greenhouse. Um, you know, which I prefer to do rather than having them in the house. But I've I've kind of got to the point where I'm thinking, really, I need to get these in now. And there's and there's a number of varieties that I'm uh, that I'm doing. I've showed you these before. So these are some sweet peppers, um, sweet mix. Um, there's some long red um, Marconi, Marconi um, peppers there. Um, there's some smaller um, um, sweet bonita um, there. There's some chili jalapenos, some more jalapenos, and there's these. Um, Mohawk F1 hybrid um, seeds that's now grown, but they're all pretty much needing to go in now, really. Um, and with peppers, they need a long sort of growing season. Now, if you are going to grow them in the house, you don't really need to go out and buy anything, um, you know, sort of really special. What I do is over the years, um, these are the pots that things like um, I don't know, strawberries or mushrooms, or most of these, um, coming in the shops, and I always save these. Because uh, what you can do with these is if you get the, they come in various different shapes and sizes, you, what you'll get is like a shallow one like that which is about two inches or so high, and then you'll get the longer ones which are kind of two and a half inches. And what you'll find is, if you, if you look at the distance in, difference in height, what you'll get is one, the blue one slightly shorter than the other one. And so what you can do is you can sit the blue one inside the black one, um, and, and then what you can do is you can put your seeds in the top one, and then the uh, the bottom one there will be you know can be there to catch any um, sort of um, extra water, and what you could do then is you can put that on the windowsill in the house, um, and uh, you know so you won't damage your windowsill. So all you need to do basically is you're going to make a seed tray out of the blue one if you like, and then sit the blue one inside the black one. So 
all you need to do is to make some holes in the bottom of there because obviously what you don't want to happen is when you water it is this to become waterlogged so this needs to have holes in the bottom the easiest way i've found to do this and if you don't have a blowtorch like me you can do this with um you know you can do this if you don't want to use heat you can use um you know, just like a, a drill or something and drill some holes through. But I've always found this is the easiest way to do it. So all I've got here is just a blowtorch, uh, which is nothing nothing special about this at all. I'm just going to quickly light that. You can't really see the flame, but all I'm going to do is heat heat the um, the end of the, um, the screwdriver up like that. It doesn't need to be massively hot. And you can use anything here, but what I would suggest you do is use something with a handle on it. So, obviously, because metal's a good conductor, it'll It'll, um, you know, the, the, all, all of this will get hot eventually. So I'm just heating that up, and then all you need to do then is just bob that through like that a number of times. And as you can see, that really easily goes through the plastic. As I say, it doesn't need to be massively hot. You want to make plenty of draining holes in here, so that if you do put too much water, which you're bound to do, um, that'll, as you can see, that you know, through one um, touch, as you can see, that's I've got plenty of holes running through there. Just get another blue, another blue one. Like that. I don't know if it's going to be hot enough now, so I'll just heat that up a little bit more. As I say, you don't need to get it massively hot. If you've got a gas hob or something like that, you could potentially do this on the gas hob, but it does smell a little bit of plastic as you're doing it. Any old screwdriver or anything that's, you know, just a, just a, a nail or something like that, if you hold it with some plies, you can do it with that as well. Also, be careful because it will get hot. All we need to do is go through like that, make plenty of holes so that the, the, the compost can drain. Now this will save you money obviously because you don't need to go out and buy um, um, any sort of trays from the garden centre. And this really is an ideal size, this is kind of half a tray size or so. This is ideal for um, if you're growing peppers, you don't want to grow massive amounts of um, of peppers, and, and I find that something like this big, about half a tray's worth, or possibly slightly less, is more than more than good enough to uh, just do this last few holes. More than big enough to put your peppers in. Right, so we've now got three trays with holes in, so that's ideal. So we can turn that off, get that out of the way. So obviously if you are using, if you are doing this obviously be careful but uh, as you can see you can very quickly put a load of holes through the bottom of your trays and uh, you know and you, only, you know, you can use these for two or three, four years before they start to break and stuff like that. So uh, right, so the first one, all I'm going to do now is put some, put, put some cotton, potting compost in there. Like that. Now with peppers they do need heat to germinate, um, tomatoes you can get to germinate at a much lower temperature um, so I could potentially get away with that in the greenhouse but uh, most certainly what you want to do is um, with, with, with peppers what you want to do is get them up to around 20, 20, between 20 and 22 degrees because uh, that's, that's where they're going to germinate. So. Um, I don't know if it says on here, yeah, so it says there between 18 and 21 um, degrees, I don't know if you can see that. So they're not going to germinate in this greenhouse. This week um, in the date has got up to um, 30, 39 degrees, believe it or not. Um, but at night it's going down to minus three still. So in here, I don't know how many seeds we've got, we've probably got about, uh, does it say? Eight seeds, so as you can imagine, you know, there's not so many in here. So these these little trays are ideal. So just tap them out. All right, so you don't get a lot for your money, but there you go. There are the seeds there. And obviously, they just look like the seeds that you get out of um, out of the middle of a pepper, ironically. So I'm I'm, I'm planting these about two inches or so apart. All you need to do is get them germinated. As soon as they've germinated then obviously you can, um, there's actually nine seeds in there so I'm going to put them like that. Now space is of a, a premium so what I'm going to do is put a lollipop stick across there and then I can put a, like three or four seeds in of another plant. So all I need to do, if I can find a lollipop stick, 
No, I'll get one in a minute. I'll just put that across there. And I can basically put a divide in. So those are the those are the uh, that that type of chili. Those are the uh, Mohawk F1 hybrids. So all I'm going to do now is just just very gently sprinkle um, some some compost on the bottom of there like that. So I know roughly. I need to know where they are basically. Oh, it's some like pop sticks. So now if I put that across there like that, I've I've, I've created like a divide in the in the uh, the tray so I can put some more on there right so let's do the next type um, we got jalapenos okay we've got these red horn ones let's do these let's do these now there's there's 75 seeds in here I'm not going to need that many but um, let's uh, let's put some of these in so we can put probably that many in I can put some more on there but again you want to grow these um, about the same distance apart you want them kind of an inch, an inch and a half apart because what you don't want to do is, is to have two seeds together because they'll they won't grow very well and then the, the plant from you know from day one won't be very strong so again these seeds are practically the same as before as you can see um, and all I'm going to do, start off with this one is put one seed every, so I'm, I'm putting like rows of three in if you like um, and that will be they're just about the right size to handle. You don't want them much smaller than this. Like that. Now the germination rate should be pretty good with these. So if I quickly put those in like that. Um, and all I'm going to do is just sprinkle a little bit of compost on the top. as it's just, just like I've done with the others. You don't need much. And don't overly firm the compost down. You want the compost to be touching the seed but you don't want it to be sort of tight like obviously when you're doing things like um, brassicas you know you can you can push it right down but with I find with peppers and tomatoes and stuff you know you want to firm it down so that the so that the compost is touching the seed but what you don't want to do is is push it down so it, the, the the compost is really firm okay so that's the three um, all, all the seeds and I've just sprinkled a bit of compost on the top now what I'm going to do now is very gently just press those press those down like that you don't need to do any more than that and then obviously with these with these larger black tubs as you can see they're slightly taller um, I can then just drop that in there like that um, and with that one I'm going to use a dark blue one so obviously what will happen now is when you water these the water will come out of the holes at the bottom and then it'll go into this tray at the bottom. Obviously what you do need to do is if you do put lots of water on uh, what you need to do is make sure that after you've watered them you just empty that tray out and then put them back in like that and then they can sit on your window ledge in your home um, whilst they're germinating. As soon as you've germinated them what you can do then is obviously prick them out into the pots and then you know hopefully the weather at some point is going to warm up then we can bring them, bring them back up the garden and then uh, they can be sort of grown on in the greenhouse. Okay, so that's all the peppers in now. So we've got the jalapenos over here, uh, the mohawks are in this area of this one here, then we've got the long red um, Marconi in the remainder of that one there, and these here, and then these ones here I've put in the, um, the sweet peppers. Now, in each of these, also I've got five rows of three, so there's 15 seeds in each of these trays, so that should be more than enough um, peppers to, um, to do with this year. So basically, what I'm going to do is put those into the um, to the house. What I'm going to do is fill this, um, you know, my seed watering um, bottle, which is just a normal pot bottle. I'm going to fill that with warm water, water the seeds, and that will that will spur them on to um, to grow a little bit better. And then obviously leave those on the windowsill in the house, and then they'll develop over the next um, few weeks. As soon as the weather starts to pick up a little bit, as I say, I'll bring them up, prick them out, put them into um, these types of pots, and then I can grow them on in the greenhouse. Uh, but at the moment, with the weather that it has um, been like, really, I need to keep these in the house, most certainly to germinate, um, and then I can uh, bring them up to the garden a little bit later on. So, I hope you found this episode interesting. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you with Dorothy on the next episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Bye.